Have a wiggle a dog? This video is for you. We're gonna take a look at a few methods, the pros and cons of each, which needs they meet, they do not meet, and how to find strategies that will meet everybody's needs and result in a cooperative grooming experience. This is Betty the Groomer Chick, let's jump in! Why dogs wiggle and what can we do about it? To better understand these two questions and to be able to answer them, I invite you to play a little game. Imagine that you're the dog on the grooming table and think about ways why you would be uncomfortable there and how would you tell that to the groomer. Now you might say you have a bellyache and you are not comfortable standing but you prefer sitting. It can be that your answer is you feel spooked by the clipper, the sound or the sensation of the clipper or both because this is the first time you saw such a thing and you really don't want that touching your pee pee. It can be because you are experiencing pain while they are trying to demat your coat. It can be that you did not have the chance to pee before they put you on the grooming table and you really have to go number one or number two. It can be that you're not staying still for an Instagram image because there are other doggies around and you are not looking at the camera but every other doggy or people moving around in the room. It can be because you're a high energy level dog by nature and you haven't had your daily exercise yet. It can be that you are not trusting the groomer yet and you were not really convinced by the first meet and greet that you really can trust them. The reasons for the wiggles for you can be that this is a new environment and this is the first time you get a haircut and your parents are nowhere and everything is new and you don't know anyone. It also can be because in the past you got hurt on a grooming table in this location or at another location where you are at right now and you try to avoid that happening again. Let's pause here for a second and let's take a look how you would communicate your experience to the care provider. In case of a bellyache situation, my guess would be when they ask you to stand up, you would sit down. In case you're a chill or calm guy, the second time they try to uh, have you stand up, you would be sitting down but scoot a little bit away from the care provider so they would have a little bit harder time reaching your butt again. In case the belly ache is severe or you are already fed up, probably by the second time you're gonna be using bigger guns like a snap or growl. Depending on your care provider's training in dog behavior, their willingness to empathize with you and the time they have at hand, they might pick up on your behavior and try to figure out what's going on. Or in case they are in a hurry, they conveniently pick up a grooming loop and put it under your belly, around your hips and hook you up to the uh, frame above the grooming table. There can be different solutions for the other situations, like when the doggy was freaking out because of the sound or the sensation of the clipper, or the groomer's presence. I would like to take a look at possible solutions, first the most popular ones, and in the second group alternative options that will meet needs for all participants. The reason for me splitting up the solutions in two groups is because I find the most popular methods to keep dogs still, like goatee grabs, grooming loops and muzzles, etc. Meeting needs for the care providers and dogs' safety and ease in grooming. However, they do not meet other needs of the dog and they will come back and bite us in the butt rather sooner. First, let's take a look at the popular quick fix methods to keep dogs still. Grooming loops, I see them 99 plus percent on grooming tutorial videos. My own grooming table came with three grooming loops, so someone might even think that it's absolutely necessary for grooming. Grooming loops might meet needs for groomer and dog to keep both of them safe, and from grooming perspective, on the short run, it makes it easier to groom a dog in case their head is looking at that direction and I'm away from the head in case they are snippy. However, on the long run, whenever we force dogs to do something they are not willing to do, the more such an experience they will go through, the more their discomfort will build up within. And you're gonna read about cases when the doggy, out of the blue, all of a sudden, bit someone. However, poor dog, right at the beginning, was telling the care provider in the way he or she knew the best how that they were not comfortable. We ignored it put a grooming loop around the neck and especially in case we do not let the parents know about the discomfort sign and refer them out to a trainer to resolve it, the dog will just boil and boil and boil within 
and it might be at the groomer or at home that they will just blow up. Fun fact, when I'm grooming dogs, they are moving free on the table. I block off the long end of the table and the two short ones, and I'm here on the other long end and keeping them still. In case they show sensitivity signs, I take a look what exactly is causing the discomfort. In case it can be solved fast, we practice and train right there. In case it's something more severe, and I let the parents know and we figure out a plan how to desensitize the dog for that. I'd much rather have a dog halfway groomed and happy, unless it's absolutely necessary from health perspective, then force a dog into every single grooming step they are supposed to get that day, result in a pretty trim and a very unhappy dog. Because the next time they're gonna get groomed at home or by me, they're gonna remember and they will try to avoid it by running under the bed, by growling, by snapping, biting the brush or you. This is what I meant by coming around and biting us in the butt or in the face in case that's closer. Another typical solution what groomers and care providers use is restraint, especially in case they are dealing with a smaller dog. Oftentimes people think, oh, I'm just gonna grab the doggy up, hold him up or her up while someone else is trimming the nail and we can get over it. However, from the doggy's perspective, they were trying to tell you something very important that they were not comfortable with. Again, in case it's a health issue that you really absolutely must continue with the procedure, you need to go ahead, of course. However, we also need to make sure that the parents know about it and the doggy can be adequately trained and desensitized because otherwise it will come back and bite us in the butt later on when the doggy grows and grooming will not be a joyful experience. When we keep not listening to the dog's messages, sooner or later we will end up with a dog who at least will be really unhappy for grooming. The worst case scenario, they need to be sedated to get groomed. Another example of this is the goatee grab or muzzle grab or cheek grab, a popular method to keep the doggy's head still while we are doing the trim around the head or the ears. I understand from grooming perspective, it is easier to work on a still dog and we also find it safer. However, I would like us to explore possibilities that will not only meet needs for safety and ease around grooming the face, but also to meet the needs for the dog's comfort. The other day in a group, a fellow groomer shared an absolutely stunning collection of trimming the face area. It was incredibly handy, super easy to understand, very well put together. I loved it to bits except for one part. She was holding the dog's head to take an image by getting a goatee grab under the chin. And it breaks my heart because such a talent combined with the willingness to share her information with the general public for free is also demonstrating a way to keep dogs still in a way that is not comfortable for them. And my heart broke even further when the most gentle way I could, I expressed how I admire her knowledge and willingness to share this with the public. And I suggested a few other ways to hold the doggy's muzzle or keep the doggy's attention at the camera for the images. My message absolutely fell on deaf ears. So much so that when I understood she did not get the point I was making, that I was on her side. I tried to explain my perspective from another view so maybe she would understand. And this was her reaction. Approaching it, not from the groomer, but the dog mom's perspective, which I am as well. I feel really sad because oftentimes talent does not pair up with compassion. And it is up to parents to notice these nuances on images and tutorial videos and have the willingness and dedication to find other ways, for example, to keep the doggy's muzzle and head still for a head trim or an Instagram image. Unfortunately, thinking outside of the box is not the default for all of us. So I'm talking in the name of dogs as well to parents and groomers that when they produce and share a tutorial or on the receiving end, watch and learn from it, keep an open mind out and supplement the knowledge with gentle methods. I hope this video gave you a different perspective on grooming and that you're gonna be thinking about ways to keep your dog comfortable without using grooming loops, harnesses, muzzles or goatee grabs or uh, muzzle or cheek grabs because it can be done without those. To get a better understanding of alternatives to these methods, subscribe and check out my next video. Bellyrapsio Doodle, thanks for watching.